Hi, welcome. This is Here's to Your Good Health. My name is Linda Prezioso. I'm a nurse practitioner at Family Medical Center. This show is for you, by you, and about you. And tonight we're um, thankful to WHIG TV who sponsors this program because they're very interested in keeping our community informed healthy, safe, and so we give a shout out to WHIG and the owner, Sandra Smith. So we're going to just talk about um, random things tonight. You know, I, I'm always great at going down a rabbit trail, so who knows which rabbit trails I'll go down tonight. But I did want to talk, I wanted to kind of further our discussion. We talked last week about cancer and you know, things, uh, I talked about essential oils and things that could help alleviate some of the symptoms and the symptoms of cancer treatments, um, you know, radiation, chemo, those kind of things. And so I thought, well, well, let's just kind of keep with the cancer theme this week as well. And I decided that we needed to talk about why we need to eat healthy well we should anyway but especially when you you're undergoing if you've got cancer or um, going under it's any kind of treatment we should probably eat this way all the time and then we maybe wouldn't get the cancer but that's you know where this country we we're reactive so instead of teaching preventative medicine preventative um, good health, you know, eat right, those kind of things. We just react when there's a problem. Oh, you have diabetes. Okay, we're going to throw a medicine at you. Oh, you have side effects from that. Well, we'll have to give you another medicine to combat the side effects. And that's kind of the way our health system works. And in my opinion, it's backwards. We should do all the preventative medicine, and um, then we probably wouldn't have as many problems. But anyway, you know me, I'm, uh, I'm all about health and natural as much as possible. So we're just going to go and talk about a couple of things here. Um, I got these all mixed up here, so just give me one minute. I wanted to talk about why should we should eat, what we should eat. And I had, um, um, I work, when I was at the hospital, uh, a co-worker of mine, had breast cancer, and um, I don't know where in the heck this goes. Well, I'll figure it out. Um, and so she went to the cancer treatment centers of America, and I think she went to Philadelphia. The closest ones are Philadelphia and maybe Atlanta. And she went up there, you know, and the cancer treatment centers of America, they focus on the whole fa the whole person, you know, body, soul, and spirit. Most of the cancer treatment around here, and I'm not saying one is better than the other. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying what she did. Um, but, you know, they treat you spiritually, they treat you emotionally, and they treat you physically. And so she, she had been up there and gotten her treatment and was in... Um, I, I don't remember if she was still getting um, treatment or if she was done with that. But she was sitting at her desk, it was lunchtime, and she was eating something, and she did not look like she was enjoying her lunch. I said, Pat, what's wrong with the food? What, why are you looking like that? And she said, it's good for me. I said, well, yeah, that's good. We like to eat things that are good for me. She said, I don't really like it. But I'm, I'm determined to make myself better and more healthy after I went through this cancer. So I had to give her a, a, you know, a high five. You know, I'm kind of an emotional eater. And if I feel like I'm upset, I need some french fries. <laughs> and, um, but, you know, she was, she was bound and determined to put healthy, nutritional foods into her body. So... I thought, well, let's just talk about that a little bit. So why is food important? Why do we need food? Why do we need to know what we're eating and why we're eating it? Well, quite simply, the food you eat affects how you feel. A healthy diet can help you feel better, regain your strength and energy, reduce the risk of health problems like heart disease, diabetes, and some cancers. 
Before making any big diet changes, you of course need to talk to your doctor to make sure that you don't have any food or dietary restrictions, you know, especially if you're going through some kind of medical treatment. And I'll give you, for instance, if you're on dialysis, you're supposed to eat a, um, a, a, a kidney diet. It's specific for people on dialysis. There's certain foods you can't eat. If you are on Coumadin as a blood thinner, you can't eat leafy greens. So that's what we're talking about here. To make sure if you've got a particular problem, you talk to your doctor and say, well, you know, can I eat this? Can I not eat that? And you know, it isn't always easy to make healthy choices. Eating healthy is expensive. Eating healthy means you shop the perimeter of the drug of the grocery store. Don't go in the middle where all the processed food is. We need to really stay away from processed food, especially processed meats. And in, I, I kind of tend to think that all meats are processed to a certain degree. You know, I'm not sure how much of that they're doing now, but years ago, you know, they would fatten up those pigs and cows just before they send them to market so they get more for their, you know, they want them to weigh as much as possible. They would put hormones in them and of course all that leached into the meat and then it went into our bodies when we ate the meat. So that's why I, you know, I buy um, um, grass-fed beef from a local guy here, a, a chiropractor I know, he raises them in his pasture. I'm looking for a pig, so if any of you are pig farmers and let your pigs, um, you know, you just feed them regular grain and corn and things and don't, don't shoot them up full of stuff, I'd, I'd like to buy some pork. And, um, you know, chickens the same way. And I, I don't trust a lot of the um, meats that they have at the grocery stores I don't, because the labeling can be so deceptive because the Food and Drug Administration allows you to say this, for instance, that the chicken can say um, farm-raised chicken or grass-fed chicken, when the truth of it is they're in a big chicken house, but the doors are open. So that's considered, they could go out if they wanted to. So that's considered, you know, grass-fed or, um, that kind of thing and so it's just kind of deceptive so unless you know exactly what the labels can say you know and I, I don't I should have gotten a, an example better example than that but um, you've got to really read labels for instance I saw a patient today who was taking um, some kind of a supplement I can't remember what it was for and I looked and she said, do you think I should keep taking this? And I looked at it. The first three ingredients were sugar in a health food. Hello, we don't need any sugar. And then they had some apple juice in it. I said, and some other things that I couldn't pronounce. And I said, why don't you just eat the apple and forget all this stuff? I, I told her not to take it, but I don't know where she got it. I don't remember the name of it. But you've got to read your labels. If you're on a sodium restricted diet, you've got to read those labels because there's a lot of sodium in canned foods and in packaged foods, things in boxes or cellophane wrapped. So you you know, you've really got to learn how to read the labels. Di diabetics have to learn how to read the labels. They they're carb restricted. And so you can't, you know, you've got to read and see how many grams of of carbs are in whatever you're buying because you can only have so much per meal. So anyway, so it isn't easy to make choices unless you grow everything yourself and who does that? I mean I have a garden and I do some canning and some freezing but it's not enough to get us through the whole winter. I, my garden isn't that big. I don't want it to be that big. I don't have that much energy to have it that big. So, you know, I'm still going to buy some canned tomato sauce. Um, I try to, to um, go to, you know, like Whole Foods and things like that to get better products. But you, you can't get away from it unless you're going to do it all yourself. And I'm not going to do it all myself. I work full time and, and I come here on Wednesday nights and that's enough. I don't want to be in the garden 24-7 either. So, um, you know, it, it's not easy to make healthy choices sometimes. You know, if you're, 
there's an illness in the family and you're running to the hospital after work, you don't have time to cook. You're going to stop and get some fast food or you're going to, you know, you might get a salad or something. It's a little bit healthier choice, but life gets in our way and we can't always do everything 100%. But when you have cancer and when you're fighting cancer and when you are in treatment, you really need to focus on everything that you can to make it as good as possible for your body. So, you know, it's hard sometimes if you've been under treatment and you're nauseated, you don't want to eat. Um, so it, it's sometimes hard to balance the needs of what they need and the demands of the rest of the household too, you know. Daddy's got cancer, but the three little kids want hamburgers and fries. So, you know, there's all sorts of challenges in anything we go through. But, um, you know, the, the thing is, you need to make it as much as possible a whole family thing. You know, um, my one grandson, who's much better now, but at one point he would eat nothing but hot dogs, corn dogs, french fries, and ketchup. That was about his whole, his whole what he ate. And um, so his mom got smart and she said, well, Bentley, come in the kitchen and here, let's peel some carrots or let's, you know, um, cut up these peppers. And then, I, you know, when they get in there and they work with it, then they're willing to try it a little bit more. Or help me cut up these strawberries. And now he pretty me much eats anything, but it took a while and his mom's in ingenuity to make that happen. So um, we can, you know, keep track of what you're eating. Keep, you know, I, I, I know I'm really bad for this mindlessly putting something in my mouth. Like I had some Cheerios at my desk because sometimes I like to have yogurt and Cheerios. I got itchy ear here. And um, I, I just felt like eating the Cheerios. I, I felt like I wanted a little crunch. And before I knew it, they were almost all gone. I didn't even realize I've been eating them like that. So, you know, we have to keep track of that. There's all sorts of apps for your phone you can use. Um, all sorts of, you know, keeping track of calories, keeping track of foods, keeping track of exercise. Excuse me. So, um, you know, and then you've got to make sure that you, you, can eat certain foods with medications like we talked about before and you know when you first go under some of these treatments you don't have much of an appetite so just eat small little meals like that um, but I want to get more into what the heck should we eat um, so the last thing you're being if when you're being treated for cancer the last thing you want to do is think about sticking to a diet um, I don't I don't ask people undergoing cancer treatments to do this I would never overwhelm you with what you should be eating as a and I'm reading from a dietitian and she says it's her job to set a foundation to keep you as strong and healthy as possible while you're getting treatment and the main um, nutritional goals during cancer therapy is getting enough because of the nausea and you just don't feel good and you just don't want to eat. Fluids to stay hydrated and um, she says mostly from caffeine free fluids. I'd say everything is caffeine free. Um, a little, mostly water, maybe a, one cup of coffee a day or something like that if you're a coffee nut like I am. And, you know, we get our energy and nutrients from healthy foods, and protein helps us to maintain lean body mass. And every um, patient is different, and every body is different to a certain extent. But you generally, your healthy diet includes fr fruits and vegetables, whole grains, beans, nutritious fats, and lean protein. And, um, you know, you've got, you can, have problems with your stomach and so you've got to learn f the foods that are, are easier on your stomach to digest. So fresh fruit, you know the best choices are fruit that is refreshing and easy to eat in high in water content. Melons, berries, pineapple, bananas, pears, and canned or jarred fruit in their own juices are all good. 
Yogurt is easy to eat and it helps promote healthy digestion. Choose unsweetened varieties and you can add berries, cinnamon, almonds, things like that to make it taste a little better. Hot or cold cereal. I, I, I agree with the oatmeal. I don't really agree with um, cereal. Like I guess there's some that are good. She's saying puffed brown rice, shredded wheat, granola. And you can make the granola at home. Um, Rice-based cereals are particularly good if you have some digestive difficulties. But no Cocoa Puffs, no, um, I don't know, Captain Crunch and things like that. It's full of sugar and it's just designed to make your kids want more and for you to buy it at the grocery store. Whole grains, eat whole grain breads and crackers. Be sure it always says 100% whole grain on the package. Whole grain promotes regularity and digestive health. Too much refinement can strip away fiber, protein, and other nutrients. That's why it's not good to eat refined foods. It's not good to eat packaged foods because the nutritional value is, is stripped from it. Um, and for meats and poultry, whole unprocessed meats without nitrates, you know, that's why bacon is so bad. It's full of nitrates. Rotisserie chicken is a convenient choice as chicken tuna salad and, um, are often softened in soups and stews and the slow cooker is also a good way to make that and so it's easier for you to chew and digest especially if you've got like throat cancer or you know thyroid cancer or something like that and um, eggs are good just be sure that they're cooked don't eat them raw so um, I think a lot of the foods that I'm talking about and we're going to talk about, they're just as important for you and me that don't have cancer than those that do. I was in a meeting Monday night at work and one of the doctors that bought our business, he is working on with his patients to um, get them off of all their diabetic medicine that he says if you eat this way you can control your sugars and get off medicine so it's primarily now he is pushing a keto diet which personally I don't agree with but he's got statistics and he's showing his patients you know how showing us how well his patients are doing but keto is pretty restrictive and you certainly would not eat keto if you were undergoing any cancer treatments at all. But my point was that um, if we eat the right things, we can control our, our health. We can control our diabetes. We can control our um, sugar. We can control our high cholesterol. For me personally, I, I push more um, vegetables and fruits. I, I believe in what God gave us. You know, I believe he created these things for us and we're supposed to eat them. So, um, you know, cancer affects how your body uses its nutrients. Um, and you lose weight more easily. Normally, eating and drinking will help you maintain a healthy weight and allow you to cope with your cancer treatments better. But, you know, that the, the C word is a big word and we're afraid to hear it, but, you know, they've made so many um, um, strides in cancer treatment and everything that um, even pancreatic cancer about five, eight years ago was pretty much a death sentence, and now it is not. So... Um, we, you know, we, they keep making strides and research and that kind of thing, and we're going to all get through this together, but we do have to eat healthy. So I'm going to take my first break, and I'll be back, and we'll talk more about good health and cancer. Hang on. Don't go away. At Downey's Hearing Care Associates, we are dedicated to taking care of every client by providing personal, high-quality hearing care services. My staff and I know hearing loss affects each person and their loved ones differently, so we give you the time and the care you need to ensure the hearing technology chosen fits your lifestyle. 
At Downey's Hearing Care, we also make custom ear molds and specialize in emergency hearing aid repairs. Down East Hearing Care Associates has two locations, one in Nightdale and one in Rocky Mount. We have hearing lives to save. Hi, I'm Richard Goss, pharmacist and owner of Almond's Drug Store here in Rocky Mount. I'm here today with my wife and two daughters. For over 75 years, Almond's Drug Store has been the pharmacy of choice for residents of Edgecombe and Nash County. Our family is proud to call Rocky Mount home, and we are excited about the new services and products we are adding daily at both of our Almond's Drug Store's locations and also at our medical supply store. Come in and see us at Almond's Medical Supply. We're an extension of Almond's Drug Store's, your local hometown pharmacy. We're here to service all your needs, from wheelchairs to walkers to orthopedic supports, to compression hose, to hard-to-find wound care supplies and you'll always get that hometown customer service. We want our patients to pay the best prices, get the best service available, and have a better pharmacy experience than they will get anywhere else. Our staff is committed to going above and beyond to meet our patients' needs. Whether it is working with your provider to get you the best medication at the best price, contacting your provider to get you refills or a pre-authorization, or taking the time to review each of your medications with you personally, or perhaps even helping you find an old-time remedy or other hard-to-find items, your Almond's Drug Store staff will work hard to meet your pharmacy needs. At Almond's, we will deliver your prescriptions for free. Both of our stores have drive through windows, we guarantee short wait times, and our pharmacists will come out to greet you personally and answer any questions you have. If you want to be met with a smiling face, or even want someone to greet you by name when you walk through the doors, we are the pharmacy for you. Call Almond's Drugs today. 443-3138 or 446-0014. Welcome back. This is Here's to Your Good Health. We've been talking about food and cancer and things that you can eat um, to maintain health in your body while you're going through treatments. Um, so I, I sound like a um, broken record, but um, fruits and vegetables are the best and you probably are going to need some starchy foods, breads, 100% whole wheat breads because you're losing weight and that will help get weight on you. Um, dairy and alternatives are okay. Meat and fish and eggs. But what, so, you know, that kind of makes sense. We know what to eat or we don't maybe want to do it, but we know what to eat. But um, what, what shouldn't you eat? What foods should you stay away from? Um, so some, so, well, where did it go? Hang on. So if you don't have an appetite, you might want to eat small little portions and often. Don't eat three large meals. You shouldn't eat three large meals anyway. Eat smaller calorie and protein rich meals or snacks every two to three hours. Keep small, high-calorie snacks handy for when you feel like eating. Good choices are yogurt, cereal, cheese, and crackers. Um, go for the high-calorie, high-protein foods to build up your nutrient stores. Um, you can add cream, cheese, butter, or honey to things. Now, this is if you don't have an appetite after you've had your treatment. Um, if you find your appetite changes throughout the day, eat your biggest meal when you feel the most hungry. See, I've got to eat a lot in the morning, and I eat a pretty healthy lunch. And then I don't care if I eat the, I, I don't have to eat the rest of the day. Sometimes I do, but I don't have to. Um, and, you know, we all have our, our circadian rhythm, our way that we um, want to eat. And we're all different. So my husband... He can go all day without eating, and then he start he eats supper, and then he snacks all the rest of the night. See, I'm done eating then. I don't want to eat. So we we've never had good eating habits with each other because we're both so different. Um, blend nutritious smoothies with fresh fruit, yogurt, um, and you know you can throw some greens, leafy greens, and things like that in there. You don't even taste them. Um, and then if you feel sick, 
you know you're nauseated you want to avoid fried and fatty foods uh, you want bland foods like crackers or plain toast um, eating foods that have that contain ginger a ginger biscuit or ginger tea that will help um, tame your tummy down some don't lie down after eating sit up for a short time after your meal you know if you've got if you got heartburn the last thing you need to do is eat and lay down that will only make it worse um, and if your mouth is dry or you have trouble swallowing you just have to keep drinking liquids so you can suck ice cubes or um, like popsicles made out of fresh fruit blend foods so they're easier to swallow and then um, you know we probably need to take some supplements calcium vitamin D that will help prevent osteoporosis you know when your body's going through all that stress it, it's not working right so you're not producing what you need to make good healthy bone um, and I, I always say that if you are going to get your supplements either get them from Ward Specialty Pharmacy or Remedy This Naturally they make their living off of supplements um, you know Walmart, Walgreens those kind of places Dollar General they could care less if you buy their vitamins because they're, they're you know they're making their money on the whole all the amount of, of huge amounts of, of products that they sell you know these small little mom and pop shops they've got to give you good stuff and they need for you to keep coming back so they can keep their store going so um, let's see there's a lot of information about different diets that can treat cancer or stop it from coming back and I I would not I mean if it's a good healthy diet eat it to need to boost your health and your energy don't eat it because you think you're going to get rid of um, of the um, cancer to treat or cure there's no diet that I know that will do that you know there's um, the macrobiotic diet the Gerson therapy the raw food diet the paleo diet they've all been talked about but there's no proof that any of these approaches will help prevent or, pure, or cure cancer. Um, there's ongoing research about the possible link between sugar and cancer. Sugar is a carbohydrate. We need it to form energy. But um, there's speculation that sugar may feed cancer cells. So cutting it out would help stop cancer from growing. But it's not as simple as that. There seems to be several different ways in which sugar affects cancer risk, but more research needs to be done before we see this. But you know, as a general rule, you shouldn't eat a lot of sugar. It's very addicting. It's very inflammatory. If you've got arthritic pains, you don't need to be eating sugar because that just feeds into it. If you've got a lot of um, bacterial infections in your body one place or another bacteria loves warm dark places and lots of sweet sugar so you want to stay away from that as much as possible um, you know it's just common sense and it's a good healthy balanced diet and so I wanted to talk about some of the foods that may help lower your risk of cancer um, and of course, once again, fresh fruits and veggies, good choices to help you maintain your weight, and then avoid um, foods that are known to can cause cancer. For instance, stay away from nitrates like in bacon. So um, what are some cancer-fighting foods? Um, there are all, a lot of the cancer-fighting foods are loaded with phytochemicals called phytonutrients and these are compounds that are found in plants um, the list is usually topped with berries broccoli tomatoes walnuts grape and other vegetables and fruits and nuts um, if you want to look at typical foods that reduce cancer practically all um, plant-based foods plant foods are are the ones they contain the the phytochemicals um, 
there's some other ones though let's see if I can find the list I think I just I put in I copied too much stuff okay so one of the number one um, cancer fighting foods is broccoli now why is it that I love vegetables and I eat a lot of vegetables and plant-based but broccoli is like on the low end of my I just don't like it very much I, I'll eat it if I went to your house and you serve chicken and broccoli I would certainly eat it um, but if I've got three or four choices in front of me broccoli is not going to be my number one choice I don't know why my daughter loves it I wish I had more of her and me but I don't so that's just the way that goes and broccoli contains sulfophanes which is a compound found in cruci cruciferous vegetables and they have um, they, they believe to have some potent anti-cancer properties one test tube study showed that the um, sulforaphane sulfur reduced the size and number of breast cancer cells by 75 percent um, similarly an animal study found that treating mice with this sulfur, sulforaphane helped kill prostate cancer cells and reduce tumors in the mice. Um, some studies have shown that higher intake of cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, and that includes um, cauliflower and some other ones too. Um, they're, they're the best, and you should eat that a couple, three times a week because it's, it's associated with a lower risk of colorectal and colon cancer. Um, this hasn't really been done on cancer, on how it affects cancer in humans. Most of it's been done in a test tube, so there's always more work to do. Um, and then we have carrots. Now I love carrots, raw and cooked. And several studies have seen, found that eating more carrots is linked to a decreased risk of certain cancers. For example, analysis uh, looked at the results of five studies and concluded that eating carrots may reduce the risk of stomach cancer by 26 percent. Another study found that a high intake of carrots was associated with 18 percent lower odds of developing prostate cancer. And uh, one analyzed study of 1,266 participants with and without lung cancer found that current smokers who did not eat carrots were three times as likely to develop cancer, lung cancer, compared to those who ate carrots more than once per week. So try incorporating carrots into your diet, healthy snack, delicious side dish, a few times a week to help reduce the potential of risk of cancer. Um, then there's beans. Beans are high in fiber, which some studies have may help protect against colorectal cancer. One study followed by um, followed with 1,905 people with a history of colorectal tumors found that those that consume consume more cooked dried beans tended to have a decreased risk of tumor reoccurrence. An animal study also found that rats that feeding rats black beans or navy beans and then inducing colon cancer blocked the development of the cancer cells. So, um, but you know why do beans make you so gassy? That's why I don't like to eat them because I have that problem and it's embarrassing. Um, so beans are high in fiber and that's why they think that they're so good. Berries. Now berries are my favorite fruits. I love strawberries. I love blueberries. Um, I don't like raspberries or blackberries because I don't like those itty bitty seeds. I like the flavor of them but I don't like to eat them like that. I'll eat a blackberry jelly or something but I won't. I don't like blackberries necessarily. And they're high in anthokinins plant pigments that have antioxidant properties and may be associated with a reduced risk of cancer. One human study, 25 people with colorectal cancer were treated with bilberry extract for seven days and it was found to reduce the um, growth of cancer cells by 79%. 
Another gave freeze-dried black raspberries to patients with oral cancer and showed that the decreased levels of certain markers associated with the with the cancer progression. Um, if you one study showed that if you gave rats freeze-dried black raspberries, it reduced esophageal tumor by 54 percent. And um, another study using rats had a berry extract that was found to inhibit several biomarkers of cancer. Um, and so, you know, they're, they're really good. They also, um, a lot of the dark colored berries, well, I guess most of them are dark colored, um, but like blueberries and all, they have resorbitol, which is also good for your heart health. Cinnamon is known for its health benefits. It helps to the bill it helps to stabilize your blood sugar and ease inflammation. Um, so that's a that's a good food to eat. When I was in training, I was in Spring Hope at a clinic there and um, this gentleman came in and his sugar was way out of whack. And I said, Sir, why is your sugar so high? And he said, I, well, I've been eating cinnamon. I, I said, well, that's good. Cinnamon's supposed to be good for you. I said, how are you eating the cinnamon? Well, in a cinnamon roll, of course. Well, hello. That cinnamon is very much less in there than the sugar and everything else that is not good for you. But cinnamon is good for you. Nuts. Um, they did a study of 19,000 people and um, by eating a, a greater amount of nuts, was, um, it decreased the risk of dying from cancer. Um, and there, another one that had 30,000 people, and they studied those people for 30 years, and they found that eating nuts regularly was associated with a decreased risk of colon cancer, pancreatic, and endometrial cancers. So, um, you know, if you can eat some of these good foods and um, they taste good and it's helping you in the long run, I mean, it's kind of a win-win, isn't it? Um, nuts are high in selenium, which may help protect against lung cancer. And um, when feeding mice walnuts that decrease the rate of breast cancer in them um, by 80%, and reduce the number of tumors by 60%. And then olive oil. Now, you know, olive oil is good, and Mediterranean people eat it all the time. But, you know, just like everything else, the olive oil industry has been tainted because the mafia has figured out that you can put in X amount of, of like, um, vegetable oil and then mix it with the olive oil and they can still call it pure virgin. So you've got to really know your source of where you get your olive oil now. One bad apple spoils the whole pack. I'll tell you, it's just so discouraging that they take anything to make a profit and they don't care about what's good or bad for us people. But anyway, olive oil can help protect against some cancers. Um, one massive review made of 19 different studies showed that people who had a lo used olive oil had a lower risk of developing breast cancer and cancer of the digestive system. That's the only oil I use other than, I use coconut oil too, but mostly olive oil when I cook. And I don't use a lot of oil when I cook either for that matter. I saute a lot, we grill a lot. Okay, we're going to stop here and take our next break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the benefits of turmeric in fighting cancer. Don't go away, we'll be right back. At Downey's Hearing Care Associates, we are dedicated to taking care of every client by providing personal, high-quality hearing care services. My staff and I know hearing loss affects each person and their loved ones differently, so we give you the time and the care you need to ensure the hearing technology chosen fits your lifestyle. At Downey's Hearing Care, we also make custom ear molds and specialize in emergency hearing aid repairs. 
Down East Hearing Care Associates has two locations, one in Nightdale and one in Rocky Mount. We have hearing lives to save. When faced with special care needs for elderly or disabled loved ones, families want compassionate, comforting care. That's Tender Touch Home Care Services' goal, providing the level of care we would expect for our own. With over 10 years of home care excellence, Tender Touch provides an array of services that keeps your loved one at home. From personal care, light housekeeping, errands, and meal preparation, to our private duty care program, which combines all of our home care offerings in one package. Tender Touch Home Care Services, where your needs are our concern. Hi, I'm Richard Goss, pharmacist and owner of Almond's Drug Store here in Rocky Mountain. Here today with my wife and two daughters. For over 75 years, Almond's Drug Store has been the pharmacy of choice for residents of Edgecombe and Nash County. Our family is proud to call Rocky Mount home, and we are excited about the new services and products we are adding daily at both of our Almond's Drug Store's locations and also at our medical supply store. Come in and see us at Almond's Medical Supply. We're an extension of Almond's Drug Store's, your local hometown pharmacy. We're here to service all your needs, from wheelchairs to walkers to orthopedic supports, to compression hose, to hard to find wound care supplies and you'll always get that hometown customer service. We want our patients to pay the best prices, get the best service available, and have a better pharmacy experience than they will get anywhere else. Our staff is committed to going above and beyond to meet our patients' needs. Whether it is working with your provider to get you the best medication at the best price, contacting your provider to get you refills or a pre-authorization, or taking the time to review each of your medications with you personally, or perhaps even helping you find an old-time remedy or other hard-to-find items, your Almonds Drug Store staff will work hard to meet your pharmacy needs. At Almonds, we will deliver your prescriptions for free. Both of our stores have drive through windows, we guarantee short wait times, and our pharmacists will come out to greet you personally and answer any questions you have. If you want to be met with a smiling face, or even want someone to greet you by name when you walk through the doors, we are the pharmacy for you. Call Owens Drugs today. 443-3138 or 446-0014. All right, we're back. This is Here's to Your Good Health. I'm Linda Prezioso. I'm a nurse practitioner at Family Medical Center, and we've been talking about foods that can help our bodies be, become restored after cancer treatment, foods that we should be eating all the time, and now we're some foods that could actually lower the risk of your of your risk of getting cancer. And we've gone through seven. Now we're hitting turmeric. I love turmeric. It is a great health promoting, it has great health promoting properties. Curcumin is its active ingredient and it's a chemical with anti-inflammatory, antioxidant, and even anti-cancer effects. I take turmeric every day for my joints because I've got some arthritis and it really helps with the with the pain and I don't have it you know I, and it also helps me to keep my joints moving um, because I've got very little cartilage left in these knees and I'm probably looking at a knee replacement down the road and I'm fighting it as hard as I can um, one study looked at the effects of curcumin on 44 patients with lesions in the colon that have, could become cancerous and after 40 days 4 grams of curcumin daily reduced the number of lesions by 40%. Um, in a test tube study curcumin was found to decrease the spread of colorectal cancer by targeting a specific enzyme that um, is related to cancer growth. Uh, and another uh, test tube study showed that curcumin helped kill off head and neck cancer cells. Curcumin has also been affected in slowing growth of lung, breast, and prostate cancer. Um, for best results, the aim is for at least a half, one half to three teaspoons of ground turmeric per day. Um, and of course, you know, it's used as a spice to eat foods, and I love turmeric on food as well. There's not much I don't love, obviously. All right, citrus fruits. 
Citrus fruits such as lemons, limes, grapefruit, and oranges have been associated with a lower risk of cancer in some studies. One study found that the participants that ate a higher amount of citrus fruits had lower risk of developing cancers of the digestive and upper respiratory tracts. Um, a review looking at nine studies found that the greater intake of citrus fruits was linked to a reduced rate in pancreatic cancer. And then a review of 14 studies showed that a high intake or at least three servings per week of cit citrus fruits reduced the risk of stomach cancer. And so, you know, we should be eating citrus fruits not my favorite I can now my husband loves bananas and oranges he eats those every day me I like peaches pears plums I like just about every kind of fruit and I like oranges but I just they're not my favorite I don't go to that one first especially in the summer to me they don't taste quite as good in the summer anyway now flax seed you know that is high in fiber it's very heart healthy and it can be a great addition to your diet. Um, you can help reduce cancer growth and even kill off some cancer cells with flaxseed. Um, 32 women in a study that ate a flaxseed muffin every day as a placebo for over a month, the, um, well they either received a, a flaxseed muffin or a placebo for a month. The women that had the flaxseed um, had decreased the level, levels of specific markers that measure tumor growth. And of course that didn't happen with the placebo group. And there was a study of 166 men in, that had prostate cancer and there was a, and they treated him with flaxseed and that reduced or reduce the growth and the spread of the cancer cells. So um, 10 grams, one tablespoon of flaxseed in your diet each day. Um, you, can, you can put it in smoothies and those kind of things. Although it does make you go to the bathroom. So if you, some people it goes right through. I'm one of them. So you've got to be careful about that. So anytime you put any kind of high fiber in your diet, you probably need to stay close to home for the first couple times to make sure that how it reacts on your body. All right, and now tomatoes. Who does not love a good summer tomato fresh off the vine? Uh, lycopene is a compound found in tomatoes that, and that's responsible for its vibrant red color and it has anti-cancer properties. Several studies have found that increased intake of lycopene in tomatoes could be reduced to prostate cancer um, and mostly prostate cancer I see with all these different studies and of course you know I love I could just eat a tomato like a apple As a matter of fact I was at the farmers market buying some fresh tomatoes and um, this little girl came up with her parents and picked a, a tomato off of the off of the display and just started eating it and all of us that were standing around were just laughing she was like three years old her mom said she loves tomatoes every time we come here she's got to get a tomato so I guess I, I thought well I hope they're washed but you know it doesn't hurt to get a little bit of dirt in you that helps develop your immune system so that little girl is probably going to be super healthy when she grows up um, but most of all the studies showed a reduce, reduced risk of prostate cancer. Oh, and then there's garlic. Garlic has the active con component is alicin, and that has been shown to kill off cancer cells in different test tube studies. Um, that's been, these allium or alicin vegetables, garlic, onion, leeks, and shallots, they, it, it's good for stomach cancer um, and prostate cancer. And um, another study showed that participants who ate lots of garlic as well as fruit, deep yellow vegetables, dark green vegetables, and onions were less likely to develop colorectal tumors. Um, but they, the study didn't really isolate just the effects of the garlic. And you know, garlic is well known to be good for your heart. 
Um, so if you eat two to five grams, approximately one clove of fresh garlic in your diet per day, um, you take advantage of the healthy promoting health promoting properties. My husband makes something called bruschetta, which is it, it kind of looks like a salsa, but instead of Mexican seasons, it has Italian seasoning. So it's tomato and onion and um, parsley, lots of garlic and olive oil, salt and pepper. Oh, it's so good. And then fatty fish. You know, fatty fish is known to be really good for us. It can help reduce the risk of your cancer, um, especially in the digestive tract. And another study with 478,000 found that eating more fish, fish decreased the risk of developing colorectal cancer, while red and processed meats actually increased the risk. Um, and you know, fatty fish like salmon, mackerel, anchovies, have really good um, nutrients. Now I love salmon. I'm not big on mackerel. I can eat it. Anchovies, I like the flavor, but it's got to be pretty subtle and not not real distinct. So some of those aren't going to work for me too much. And you know, it, it's it, they're full of um, omega six. I think is what it is in fish. So, um, let's see, I've got something else, I think. Let me just... Okay, let's go through this list and see if there's any other foods that um, I didn't... Cherries, and we, talk, we haven't talked about cherries, another one of my favorite fruits. And um, cherries have a powerful compound called Oh, these words, perylily alcohol or POH, which has been found in both vitro and vivo studies to destroy a wide variety of cancer cells. It's also really good for arthritis, cherries are. Turmeric we've talked about, olive oil we've talked about, sea vegetables. Well, now I love seaweed and I love sushi and I love things like that, but... Um, so what's it say here? Some of the best cancer-fighting foods come to us from the sea. Kombu, arami, nori, haiki, wakami are just a few of the vegetables that have a powerful effect on cancer. And I've never heard of these and I have no idea where to get them. I guess they sound like Japanese names to me, so maybe we need to go to Japan and see about that. Um, they're also a great source of bioavailable iodine. Oxidative stress and chronic inflammation are both factors for the development of certain types of cancer. And um, the, the sea vegetables are known to fight inflammation and contain great many oxidants which counter the effects of oxidative stress. I wonder what kind of seaweed they put around that, um, those, those sushi that I just had some at um, Ikebon the other day. Now hemp. Hemp seeds, and of course, you know, hemp is what we get our CBD oil from, but um, hemp seeds encourage a full body healing and raise the melatonin levels of most people, and melatonin, it, you know, it, it helps us to sleep, but it also it can either slow or stop the growth of several types of cancer cells. And red grapes and red wine, you know, that's the um, reservatol I talked about earlier. And that's in red grapes and red wine. And that has an ox, uh, it can reduce oxidant caused cell death, which inhibits the production of abnormal growth in cells, especially in the intestinal tract. So if you inhibit those growth of those cells, then they won't grow and form into cancer. Um, and Reservatrol has been shown to inhibit a compound called COX-2, which has been linked to cancer and precancerous growth. So while Big Pharma is busy selling you, oh, it cut off, trying to sell you, well, maybe, no, wait a minute, cut off. But, you know, this COX, 
this Cox 2, they, that's what Celebrex is, is a Cox 2 inhibitor, and that's what they use for inflammation for, for um, um, arthritis and stuff. So instead of taking all those medicines, just eat more grapes, red grapes. And you can have two glasses of wine that's healthy for you um, if, if you choose to do that as well. The garlic we've talked about. Corella and spirulina. Um, these are carotenoids and they can produce, they can prevent cancer in human subjects. Um, chlorophyll is known to neutralize toxins and environmental pollutants while carrying oxygen to all the cells in the body. Cancer simply cannot grow in cells that are not fully oxygenated. Um, medicinal mushrooms. I love mushrooms. Um, there's a, they've been used for 5,000 years as medicine. The, they have a powerful antiviral and an anti-cancer effect. Um, more than 50 species of mushrooms have been studied and most of them have been found to stop human cancer cells. Shiitake, maitake, and something else I can't read have all been found to do that. And um, there's a fella, his name is John Van, and he sell, he grows mushrooms and sells them at the farmer's market and they are to die for if you like mushrooms. It ain't like your, you know, your little traditional mushroom you get in the grocery store. Green tea is very good for you. And lots of health benefits in green tea. And I think that does it. And it's time for us to say good night. And I will see you next week with more of Here's to Your Good Health. If you have anything you want me to study or talk about, all you got to do is call the station and um, we will, um, they, they'll get the message to me and I'll be happy to study on it and talk to you about it. Y'all have a great night, and I'll see you next week with more of Here's Your Good Health. Good night.